what in finance we talk to talk about is what they call a concave utility function. All that means is that uh, is that when you get to the point where you're taking risk, it's natural to think about the downside as much as you think about the upside. Sometimes we think about the downside more than the upside, and that's okay. That's actually fine. But what happens is that as you get wealthier and as you get a lot of money in your pocket, you're not thinking as much about the downside. You're thinking about just the upside. So effectively, uh, his investing behavior was what might be seen as very overconfident. It's like, okay, I've got – like NBA players go through this all the time. You got this $100 million contract, so who cares if you invest $300,000 here or throw away $200,000 there? You're very confident because you feel like the money will never run out. I used to go through this every two weeks when I got my paycheck from Taco Bell. Uh, tell me if you've ever gone through this. I used to get that check, and I would go cash it because I was a teenager, and it, that's what teenagers do kind of do, I guess. And uh, and I would get this big pile of money. I get a bunch of 20s and it felt like so much money. And in my mind, I would think I'm never going to run out of money. I've got an endless supply of money. Like if I've got a big stack of 20s in my pocket, you know, big wad of money, nothing less than a 20. If you need a five, oh, Boyce Watkins got plenty, right? So anyway, so you got this big stack of money, nothing less than a 20 in your pocket and you go to the store and it costs $5. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, this thing costs $3. Okay. Oh, well, let's go to McDonald's. McDonald's. This is going to cost, uh, you know, $7. Okay, okay, great. And then next thing, and, and, and it was crazy. It was almost like a magic trick. Every single time I would run out of money. Like, like I get my check Friday, cash it Friday, have a hell of a weekend, get through about half the week, and by about Wednesday or Thursday, the money starts running light. And you're reaching in your pocket and expecting a big wad of 20s. And there's like two, or maybe there's like one twenty, a ten, a five, and three ones, and a bunch of quarters. And you're like, "What the hell happened? Like, where did the money?" And every single time that would happen, I was like, "What is going on? How is it that when I get paid, I feel like I have all this money, but then a week later, I'm broke again?" It's, and it was weird. And and what that really comes down to is that money makes you high. Money is like dope. And what dope does is dope has you feeling like you're Superman or Superwoman. Dope, it, it gives you what in finance research is referred to as investor or spender overconfidence. You, have, you are overconfident in how much money you have, and that overconfidence leads you to make faulty decisions. decisions. So this man, Jack Whitaker, had extreme overconfidence. I mean, you got $113 million in the bank. Of course, you're never going to run out of money. But no, you, you can still run out of money with $113 million. So financial consciousness must always be present. Uh, and in fact, um, it's interesting, you know, ironically, Bill Cosby was very good at being financially conscious, even when he was very wealthy. He did he didn't want he didn't waste money on silly things. He kept up with his money. Unfortunately, his lack of consciousness came with excessive involvement with many, many, many women and and possibly doing something that was illegal. Again, we can't take that off the table. Again, I don't. I just believe in proof. Like, I think you got to prove things, but still, I mean, those allegations were pretty bad. And, and Cosby probably, I'm going to guess he's probably over time going to give away at least four or five hundred million, maybe half a billion dollars away due to the inability to control that one area of his life.